What happens if Clone Ricky dies? Well, I want to have a mascot. Anyway, he honestly sucks. Anyway. That means my hair doesn't look like crap. Hey, you little. Hey, Dad, I'm in charge now. Do you know what happened yesterday with Jada? Does it look like crap? Dad, hey, you little. Yeah, I got in a little fight in the hospital. So I'll be in charge for the next seven days. I'm using this background now. Credit to my friend Clone Ricky the Rabbit Monkey. Anyways, bye. Why never eat honey? Well, we know honey is made from bees. What's something you guys don't know to bees are throwing up in each other's mouth until it makes honey. But now, you know, I'm sick. Sign why Groundhog Day makes no sense. Genuinely, I believe this is our weirdest holiday. I've got to get out toys. Sure, funny that boobs candy you're pushing. A weird beaver thing that can forecast the weather. Seriously, why? Apparently, the tradition of forecasting an early spring or a longer winter started off in the 1800s with candles. So the Germans came along and decided to add an animal to the holiday. So they chose a hedgehog, which changed to a groundhog because there are apparently just a lot more groundhogs around. So no, there's no lore behind why these creatures supposedly have magic weather abilities or even have decent weather prediction abilities because he's only actually been right about 39% of the time, when your odds are literally 50-50, 39% is kind of rough, buddy. Also, for some reason, the entire media loves to gaslight people and said there's only been one groundhog in history, and that Puxatani Fell has been alive since the 1800s, when in reality, groundhogs only live three to six years. Sorry to break the magic for you, kids, but that's... Why ne- Dang! I'm taking over this chisel now. Bye-bye, Gino. We're in- Why? Why were- Hi guys, Cole the Rabbit here. So I looked up me on Google, and I found my old logo. Wait, clone- Guys, let's find a new back. No, that's a one. No, this is Ricky the Rabbit. Chin on. Hmm, how about the- That's one. No, that's Cole's- well, I love this one. I'm gonna use this one. Oh, the internet was made. I'm like most things we talk about here. The internet can't just be credited to one person. First came the invention of the distributed network as two American scientists, Leonard Kleinrock and Lawrence Roberts, worked to have two separate computers talk. And the first ever electronic message sent between two places was from a computer at UCLA to a computer at Stanford. Although the first message crashed the system and the second one was a success. As with most advancements, the president wanted to use it for war, so Eisenhower created the Advanced Research Projects Agency ARPA for such development, which paved the way for people like Tim Berners Lee who helped create the World Wide Web, including HTML, HTTP, URLs, and web browsers. But it was Mark and Teresa developing Mosaic that really shoved the internet into overdrive. Mosaic was basically the early version of Google Chrome, as it was the most popular. While some people were uneasy at the internet at first, others lunged at this brand new, weird, cool thing where you could send emails and join chat rooms and download music from Napster. Of course, many news sources claim the internet would be a fad and people would get tired of it any day. Kinda missed the mark, not at that. I'm trying to get some voice back. Well, it's kind of weird. <laughs> wait, wait, no, this is not my voice. Do I love my fans? I am so happy for five. Never that much. My goal for now is ten. So please subscribe. Do I have friends? Well, these are my friends, and I'm going to mash in together and see what their logos would look like mashed together. And boom, I hope you like it. But now you know that. Let's meet my new friend Atiquatado. He's Spanish. Say hi. Hola, estoy atiquetado. Goodbye. Espera clon rigi no ti. Vias talvas la proxima vez. Sorry, I haven't been posting. I'm just taking a break.